I'd like to take this moment to welcome everybody to the corner. And you might be asking yourself, what are we doing in the corner? Well, there's only one thing in the corner, and that must be what we are talking about. So this is my air compressor, or I should say one of my air compressors. I've actually got a couple air compressors, but this is the biggest, and this one is my main air compressor. Now right now I have the shroud removed. There it is right here. Just for uh, diagnosing and repairing. You really don't want to run them like this though. Uh, especially the oilless ones because the fan is back here. And without the shroud to direct the air over the head which gets very hot. It will overheat quite quickly. Because without the shroud this just kind of throws air all over the place. It doesn't really do anything. Now this is a 33 gallon horizontal air compressor 150 psi uh, oilless i've had this one for quite a while it's an 04 model and it's been pretty reliable the only real issue i had is because i use it a lot the uh, pump ended up wearing out so i had to put a new uh new cylinder new piston in uh, a while back but other than that haven't had too many issues with it except for one which has been pretty persistent and it's been occurring for quite a while now. A while back, it started having a problem where it would trip the breaker when attempting to start. Sometimes it would do it when you flip the switch on, sometimes it would do it when it tried to restart on its own. I remember working in the driveway and I'd always be looking over at the garage to see if the light had gone off, because if the light had gone off that meant that the uh, compressor had tripped the breaker again. And because it was an intermittent problem, I just kind of dealed with, dealt with it for a long time. Because intermittent problems tend to be a pain to track down. But recently, it started doing it more and more. And then eventually one day it just wouldn't start at all. And this is what it does. I flip the switch on. And you can see by the light being off that it just tripped the breaker. Let's turn the light back on. And you see it just does that again. So, the way you're looking at it is pretty close to the way I found it when I took the uh, cover off. Originally I thought it was a check valve issue or an unloader issue, but I can hear the unloader release pressure and it doesn't continue to release pressure, which tells me that the unloader and the check valve are working. When I got off you notice that this cover is not sitting flush. Well there is a little plastic piece that's supposed to be there it's missing right now and it's like down the top and the bottom and then it's supposed to bolt right onto this case uh, it cracked on the top and was just hanging out and the bottom was uh, not completely broken off but it was cracked so this cover would sit like that and as you could see it would not start when it was like that however if we hold it on there and I'm going to get some tape to do this. So just for demonstration purposes, I duct taped the uh, cover back on just to show you that it will run. And yes, it is very loud without that shroud on there. So why is it doing that? Well, first of all, unplug this and I will show you. So this cover here, this is the back cover for the motor. But why would this mounting be affecting the way it runs? Pull this off. We've got two capacitors here. Uh, one's probably for start, one's probably for run. I'm not really familiar with the exact wiring of this particular motor, but it's not really necessary for this. Now you notice here there's a little switch. Now these motors usually have a start winding and a run winding, and it has to switch over from the start winding to the run winding after it starts. So the way they do that is they have this little centrifugal uh, actuator right here. Now right now it's pushing that way out. But when the motor starts spinning these weights move out and this disc goes in releases that switch which switches it over from the start winding to the run winding. So when this cover is not tight against the motor housing it's like the switch is not being pushed on and so it's trying to start without the start winding and that overloads the breaker and trips it. So 
The fix would seem to be pretty simple. You just need a new one of these uh, housings, right? Because the plastic is broken off here. Well, the problem is that Sears doesn't list any parts for this motor. They list the pump and those kinds of parts, but they don't list anything for the motor. Well, that shouldn't be a big deal, right? I mean, this motor, of course, was not made by Sears. It was made by a different company that they contracted out. So we look on the motor over here, and there's a sticker right there that has all the motor information. And this motor is actually made by General Electric, and it's got a model number and all that stuff so we can look it up. Then we run into another problem. General Electric doesn't make parts for this motor. That uh, seems kind of crazy, but there's a reason for that. On a smaller oilless compressor like this one, where the pump is going to be mounted straight to the motor, it's often easier and probably more cost effective to have a motor that's made specifically to work with this design. So what the manufacturer of this compressor will do is they'll contract out a motor manufacturer, in this case General Electric, and have them make a batch of custom motors that are built to their specifications. Now these motors are only intended for this particular compressor pump design. After that, General Electric doesn't make them anymore because they're a custom batch specifically made for that manufacturer. And what that means is that if you need parts for any of this and the manufacturer of the compressor does not supply them, you're pretty much out of luck. So the bearings in this motor are probably a standard size and maybe one or two other components like the capacitors. But other than that, you're pretty much on your own as far as parts for this. I couldn't find this cover anywhere. Now this cover probably would have cost me like $10 or something. And I could have just bolted it on. But since they don't make parts for this, I got to get creative and come up with a solution. Now luckily, I have come up with a solution. Now originally, this back cover was mounted with these little screws. There is one up here at the top and one down here at the bottom. All the plastic that was there before has now been broken away. Now, I've already gone and I thread these holes through all the way because those screws were originally self-tappers. And I have this little bar. So this bar is going to go just like that, we'll drill some holes in it, and then I'm going to use longer screws to thread it into the existing holes in the top and the bottom, and that should hold this back cover on, and that will be my solution. I could just, you know, tape it up and hope it holds, but honestly, after the motor heats up a bit, the tape's probably going to fail and it's going to come off, and I'm looking for a more long-term solution. This is not really a vent, it's just held in there, so I'm not concerned about blocking airflow at all. So that's what I'm going to do, just a bar across the back, and that will hold the cover on so my compressor works. So I've got my new rear cover retainer in place. It's just threaded in to the existing holes with some longer screws. I did have to tap the holes out a bit with a tap because they, the original screws were self-tappers and they didn't make very good threads. Plus I needed it to be threaded a little bit deeper than it was before. And then you got a little bit of rubber inner tube here and here just to uh, space it out from the cover a little bit and provide some cushion because this cover is not entirely flat. It's got a bit of a uh, curve to it. And we want that to sit flat and then on the back sides of these screws we have these uh, nuts just to clamp down to the head so that the screws do not turn and loosen up from the vibration. I'll we'll go ahead and flip it on and it should start up. And it hasn't gotten any quieter in that time. I should take care of the problem though. Now I just gotta put the shroud back on.